Good evening, book lovers. Welcome to another episode of Catholic Live. I am your host, Amy Catapan. You can find me everywhere on social media under my pen name, AJ Catapan. If you're new to Catholic Live, here's what we do. About twice a month, I bring you interviews with Catholic authors who have new books releasing. So if you are new, welcome. Uh, today's guest is a repeat um, guest, somebody I've had on before, one of my favorite historical fiction writer, Stephanie Lansom. You may know her by her biblical fiction um, that came out a few years ago, the Living Well series. And um, now she has another historical novel out. This one is not biblical fiction. This is her second historical fiction that's not biblical fiction. Um, but I'm really excited to have her on today. Um, can you believe it is almost Lent? I don't know if you've got any kind of plan for Lent yet, but may I make a suggestion? If you're looking for a little prayer plan, um, will you check out my friends at the Hello app? And if you are not watching this on YouTube, you might want to go check out my show notes because I have a link where you can check out the Hello app for free for a while, do a free trial and do their Lenten um, prayer challenge that has a bunch of really cool people getting involved. It's got Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus on The Chosen. It's got Eduardo Varesky doing the Spanish language version. I hear Mark Wahlberg's gonna be showing up, I think on Fridays. Uh, I think Father Mike Schmitz is also involved. It's gonna be a really cool prayer challenge that we're gonna be covering um, excerpts from The Imitation of Christ, which is one of the most popular Christian um, books ever, I think, you know, like after the Bible and such. Um, so, check out the Hallow app. It's an amazing prayer app. It's got tons of things on it. Follow my link, hallow.app slash live, and uh, you can get a free trial. And it does help to support my show. So um, please use my link. Please and thank you. All right. Um, back again to our guest today, Stephanie Lansom. Stephanie Lansom writes about women in history for women who love history. Stephanie has traveled on four continents and dozens of countries as someone else who loves to travel. I'm a little jealous of some of the places she's been recently. When she can't travel, she reads fiction and history and dreams of her next adventure, whether it be in person or on the pages of her novels. She makes her home in Lake Elmo, Minnesota, Minnesota with her husband of 33 years, occasional adult children, two cats, a dog, and a tortoise named Mo. Please help me welcome back to the show, my friend, Stephanie Lansom. Hey, Stephanie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me on again. Oh, I, yes. Again, I was saying you're a repeat guest on Catholic Live, and I'm so happy to have you on. Um, so we're yeah. talking about a book that actually hasn't quite released yet. It's coming up, but we want we want to do this interview so people can get in in a little pre-order deal you got going on. So the book is Codename Edelweiss. Tell us what this book is about. Okay. Well, Codename Edelweiss, which releases on March 7th, um, is historical fiction. It's set in the 1930s. And it's about a lone Jewish lawyer who, together with his band of amateur spies, discovers and foils Hitler's plot to take over Hollywood. Awesome. Okay. So this is historical fiction. So it's based yeah. on some, some real characters, right? Leon Lewis is the real guy. Right? It's based on a true story. Right. And it's really has only come to light in recent years because um, the files were, um, I don't know, they were hidden by the FBI and then they, they were let, they let the files out just maybe 10 years ago. Okay, so is that how you learned about him? What do you got, secret access to the FBI files or what? <laughs> no, no, I learned about it after the files were released, right? And so when I was um, when I was researching In a Far Off Land, which was my last novel with Tyndale, um, that's set in 1930s Hollywood also. And so you know how, you know, you go down rabbit holes and you find different <laughs> things that you love to read but really don't pertain to the book you're writing. Um, so I ran into this book called... Um, Hitler in Hollywood. And it, at first when I saw it, I thought this just, that cannot be true. Um, it was about how Germans, um, Nazis were infiltrating Hollywood um, and then the German American communities in Los Angeles in early in the 1930s, like right after um, Hitler was named chancellor. So people really didn't know who he was. That his name was not yet synonymous with evil. It was yeah. just a guy in Germany who was kind of crazy and nobody really cared. Um, and I thought this just, this stuff can't be true, but I read the book and it's like, yeah, it is. It's fascinating. And that was 
I said, that's going to be my next book. So why do you think it isn't um, better known, this story? Because it does sound so fascinating. It seems like, you know, the kind of stuff a Hollywood movie should be made out of. It, re it really should be. There, there needs to be a movie made out of this. It's a great spy novel. Um, I think part of the reason that it is unknown is that Leon Lewis was really, really good at his job. He was, mm. he was a spy master. He didn't, he wasn't out there for, um, you know, for the recognition. He kept meticulous records of everything that he found out um, with these spies that he recruited and paid himself because wow. he was at, he was very concerned about Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. And he was what had been watching them for years and when he saw them he saw the effects of what they were saying and starting to take hold in hollywood he knew that not in hollywood but in los angeles um he just knew he had to do something about it so he kept things very very quiet to keep his spies safe for one thing because mm -hmm. they were super dangerous situations um and then towards the later like towards the 1940s when people started like get a clue that he was right about this the FBI took over a lot of his operation um and then of course everything was locked down and not like the, the public couldn't see it so he, he died just very um he was very unknown he's a very humble man he didn't ask for any um recognition he just did what he thought he needed to do it sounds almost a little Schindler's List ish in that, like, you have this guy that's not very well known, but had a large impact. Yeah, he really did. I mean, we have, should be very grateful for him, to him and the people that put, put their lives and their families in danger in order to gather this information for him. Yeah. So, yeah. So, are all the spies in the story um, actual people, or did you add in some fictitious ones too? Well, Okay, so Leon Lewis is correct. And then a lot of the Germans, um, the Nazis were are real people. Okay. The spies themselves are kind of a, a an amalgamation mm -hmm. of because I needed more storyline for them. Liesel, Liesel is based on a mother-daughter team of spies called their names were Sylvia and Grace Comfort, and they were stenographers, very much like Liesel, who used their skills to help out the German clubs with their secretarial skills. And in the meantime, they gathered a lot of information and brought it to, to Leon Lewis. So, so okay. she's, she's a made up person. She's fictitious. Fiction. <laughs> fictitious. <laughs> oh, what you mean? <laughs> I'm tripping on my tongue today too. Um, what's, what was the hardest part about writing this? Was it the research or coming up with the, the fictitious part? Well, the research was really fun. And I think part of the hardest part was just like picking and choosing, kind of cherry picking the best parts mm -hmm. of the real story, because there were so many like interesting things that went on. But then there, there was also a long period. It was set over a long period of time. He worked for probably 12 years, um, like gathering information about the Nazis. And a lot of that was really boring, um, you know, like filing lawsuits and you know, just stupid, it's just really dull lawyer stuff. Yeah. So cherry picking the, the exciting parts was fun. The hard part was kind of like juggling it all into a storyline that's that stayed moving and was exciting and had an ending because there wasn't really a real ending <laughs> in, in real life. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a tough part. And just writing a spy novel. Like, I've never done that before. So, yeah, yeah, it is a bit of a departure. Now, usually I think of there being, not always, but some romance in um, your books. Do we get a little bit of romance in this one? Yeah, so In a Far Off Land had a lot of romance in it, and this one has less than that. Okay. It does have a, a romantic thread in it, but it's definitely not the main part of the story. I would say, like, the emotional side of the story is really about Liesl and her, her family, and her friendships and how that's affected by the fact that she has to look like a Nazi to everybody mm. and she has Jewish friends and she you know it's really hard on her family to not know what she's doing and um, to like even lie to them in order to keep them safe really so that was the hard part was that spy stuff and you know figuring out who knows what all the time <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I've I've pre-ordered my copy, so hopefully it'll arrive next month. Um, 
I know you've got a pre-order deal. You want to talk about your pre-order deal? Can we share I that? Do. Tyndale has been super generous about pre-orders. They're very excited about this novel. So um, if you go to my website, stephanielansom.com, there's a tab on it that says freebies and free stuff. I always forget what it's called. You'll see it. It's like free offers or something like that. So if you go on there, you can see that um, you can get a 20% off um, coupon code from Tyndale and they already have the book 20% off. So then you get another 20% off with the coupon code, which is really nice. And if you order more than 10, like if you have a book club, um, then you get another 20% off and free shipping. So that's the way to do it. And then when you pre-order, you can also sign up to get a whole bunch of goodies from Tyndale, including a, a special agent, um, a special agent edition of the book. So you can start reading it right away. It's a hundred pages. I was kind of hoping for a super agent code ring. It's like in the old like yeah. cereal boxes. Do we yeah, have no. that? We, you know what? I played with that idea. I'm like, yeah. how can I do some kind of a code ring? It would be super, so fun. But no, but um, you could start the book. You could start reading tonight. Fabulous. Fun stuff that they're offering. So they've been super, super generous about it. All right. And where else can people find out about you? Obviously your website, stephanielanson.com. Is there certain social media they should look to that's your favorite? Or Facebook is where I put a lot of stuff and Instagram. Instagram has more of my personal stuff, like, you know, cats, dogs, travel, all that fun stuff. Um, so both of those. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on again, Stephanie. Thank it is you. always a pleasure to talk with you. It's fun to talk to you. I just hope I get to see you again this summer. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, we will be... We we can advertise this too while we're here. Yeah. We'll be at the Catholic Writers Conference, the live one. There's an online conference happening soon, but at the end of May, um, Stephanie and I will both be there. I will not be there all the days, but I will be there some of the time. Because it's still school. It's still going on, yeah. So I will, and luckily it's very close to me, so I can hop on over um, when I'm done teaching, but I will be there some of the time. And you are giving a talk. What, do you remember what you're talking about at our live conference? I am speaking to writers about finding their ideal reader. So excellent. Yes. That'll be, that'll be a fun one. And Stephanie is also arranging our pitch session. So any fellow writers out there who want to pitch to some Catholic publishers, we're going to have a number of Catholic publishers right. for people to pitch to. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I will put the information for that on the YouTube screen as well. So people can go to the CatholicWritersGuild.org slash live conference and find out about our live conference as well. Come and they're very fun. Yes, it is very fun. We have a good time. All right. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Amy. All right. All right we're gonna bye. Wave goodbye. We're gonna wave goodbye to Stephanie. And I will just wrap up by saying if you haven't checked out Stephanie's books, do check them out. I know I've got her, I've got her biblical fiction up here somewhere on one of them. Oh, I think they're right there. I think there's Stephanie's biblical fiction. Oh, and then In a Far Off Land, um, which was her previous Tyndale one. And there will be a spot there for a code name Edelweiss when that one arrives next month. Um, but like we said, you can start reading the first, I think it's the first 100 pages or something. If you do that pre-order thing, that'll come to you electronically so you can get a head start on it. So take advantage of that deal. Um, if you are not watching this on YouTube, please come on over to YouTube so you can like and subscribe and find out about all the future episodes of Catholic Live. And um, until then, I'm just going to wish you all happy reading.